Hello everybody, good morning and welcome to the Christocentric Meal, a daily reflection of your true identity in Christ Jesus. Abel Damina is my name and I'm excited to welcome every one of you today as we study the word of his grace. Invite a friend, a family member, it's going to be an exciting time of looking through the mirror of God's word. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for viewers around the world connecting this morning, the day to be alive and a day to look and reflect back in, at all of the good things you've done for us in Christ Jesus. And as we study today, clarity comes by the Holy Ghost. Your people equipped and edified, Jesus glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right. We're looking at knowing the love of the Father. Knowing the love of the Father. Why do we pray the Pauline prayers? You know what the Pauline prayers are? The prayers that Brother Paul prayed for the churches at Ephesus, churches in Colossae, churches in Philippi, even the church at Rome, the prayers of Brother Paul. Why do we pray such prayers? From Paul's epistles, we see a distinct reputation in his prayers for the saints. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 19. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know, and to know the love of Christ. You can know the love of Christ. Don't let anybody tell you that the love of Christ is too much. You can never know it. No. Brother Paul wouldn't have prayed if it was not possible. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Other similar scriptures where Brother Paul prayed such prayers is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19. It says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know, that you may know what is the hope of your calling, that you may know what is the riches of your inheritance in the saints, that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, that you may know, that you may know that power, that you may know that calling, that you may know the riches that are yours in Christ Jesus. They were prayers he prayed for those churches. Colossae, he prayed for them in Colossians 1, verse 9 to 12. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He prayed the same prayer for the church at Philippi. Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. And these I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that you may approve things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Jesus Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. All of these are prayers. He prayed for Philemon and Philemon, Verse 4 and 6 is just one chapter. I thank my God, making mention of thee always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and thy faith, which thou hast towards the Lord Jesus and toward all sins, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Virtually, all the requests made for the saints in the epistles were about immaterial things. And amongst this, prayer for knowledge was a predominant feature. These prayer points are usually called the Pauline prayers 
or spirit-led prayer point. I actually heard about this, you know, uh, prayer points and these prayers back in the 80s from Brother Kenneth Hagin. He said he prayed them every day and that if a believer will pray those prayers every day, he will come into reveal knowledge like he can never imagine. And I've been praying those prayers all my life till today and I keep praying them for myself, praying them for you, praying them for everybody that listens to us teach the word of God. Because our desire is that you will come into the robust understanding of God. You cannot relate with a God whom you don't know. So that knowledge is critical. That is predominant in all the prayers of the New Testament. Paul spent time describing to his flock what exactly his prayer for them was about. He did not do this so as to be applauded or so as to be seen in a good light by his sheep. He must have said this to draw their attention to the importance of knowledge in the Christian world. In Philippians 1.9, Paul prayed for complete understanding of the subject in discourse such that you can judge correctly. The word judge there is discern. So you can judge or discern accurately, precisely. No trial and error. Knowledge is a recurring subject in the epistles. For example, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power hath, hath given unto us. So he hath already given. It's one thing for you to have everything. It's another thing for you to know what you have. See, that's critical. He hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. He also prayed that prayer for the church at Colossae. And I've put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Romans chapter 10 verse 2, he prayed the same prayer for the church at Rome. He said, Brethren, my heart's desire for Israel and prayer is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4, look at it. He started by saying, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Then he describes, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's one thing to be saved. It's another thing to come to a place of accurate understanding of what happened to you when you got saved. Many believers are carrying unnecessary burdens and yokes. Many believers are under the yoke of religion and Judaism and they think they are in a relationship with God. So they are relating with a God that does not exist to the unknown God. And when you are relating with an unknown God, you're actually the idol worship because you don't know what you're worshiping. See, that's why knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. After you're born again, the only thing you should chase after in God is the knowledge of what happened to you. So you can maximize all that is available to you, all of your realities in Christ Jesus. This knowledge also is specific. And this is why in sentences, it often comes with the word of, knowledge of. This knowledge goes beyond a mental note. It depicts accuracy and sound understanding, precision, comprehensive insight. Spiritual growth is not amassing knowledge, but is a product of a deeper understanding in that which is already known. It comes from the precise knowledge of the Son of God. Not just knowledge, but knowledge of the Son of God. When you feed on Christ, you grow into Christ. When you feed on Christ, you grow into Him. If you are not feeding on Christ, Whatever you're feeding on, you grow into it. If you're feeding on religion, you become a religious zealot. If you're feeding on Judaism, you become Brother Paul's junior brother before he got born again. But if you're feeding on Christ, you grow up into Christ. You become rooted, grounded, and established in Christ. Paul didn't pray for you to just have knowledge. 
that you, you may have the knowledge of Christ. That's what Brother Paul wants you to grow into. The knowledge of his finished work. The knowledge of him being real on your inside. The knowledge of your inseparable union with him. Critical and vital. That gives you confidence to enjoy what redemption has provided. Praise the Lord. Precise knowledge of Christ. Say these words with me today. The focus of the scriptures remains my focus. I am in him. He is in me. Amen. Praise God. Father, I pray for viewers around the world today that this knowledge, the knowledge, revealed knowledge, the eyes of each one's understanding, your eyes are flooded with light. You are strengthened with mind by the spirit in the inner man. Christ dwells in your hearts by faith. You are rooted and grounded in love. You are sincere and without offense till the day of Jesus Christ. You walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful unto every good work. I decree that you are preserved, you are sustained, you are kept by the power of God. Grace abound towards you. The revelation of Jesus grows big on your inside until nothing else matters. You're going out and coming in today is blessed. Enjoy the goodness of God in the land of the living. Great grace is yours. In Jesus' name, amen. What a blessing to be able to share with you the word this morning and I'm excited that every day we have the opportunity to share with you the first minutes of your day, the word of his grace. Invite more people to this broadcast and share with more people this wonderful, refreshing news of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you to order for the Christocentric meal hard copy from our office. The announcer will tell you how to go about it. Digital copies on Amazon. It's exciting to know that the word of God that comes every day is building you up and it's an honor to continually serve you the grace of God. Looking forward to connecting with every one of you tomorrow for more of this. And until then, this is Abel Dabina saying that the kingdom of God is in power. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse number 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. To do the work of the ministry. That's the whole mission of pastoring. That's the whole mission of belonging to a local church. That you can be perfected so you can do ministry. Now, how to evangelize and how to preach the gospel. Or how to share your faith with other people. Philemon chapter 1 verse number 6. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. That means that the more of the word of God you appreciate, the more effective you will be in sharing your faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Verse 15. For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. The word triumph in Christ is an old word that means the trophy of victory or the proof of victory. We are the trophy of Christ's victory. We are the proof of Christ's victory. We are the trophy of his resurrection. We are the trophy of his triumph. We are the proof that Jesus rose from the dead. The text refers to our victory in Christ over death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. Through death, he destroyed him. The devil is a defeated foe. He's been destroyed. He destroyed him that had the power of death. Look at verse 15. You will love verse 15. And delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So you will not be in bondage until fear has been struck to you. When fear is released on you, then you are in bondage. 
When you become a victim or when you are in bondage, then the devil can box you around. The devil does not have any power over any man until he keeps you in fear. That's why First Timothy tells us God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. One of the things that happens in the last days is that men's hearts will fail them for fear. The devil's weapon is fear. You have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's why we are called the faith community. We are a people of faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. I thought somebody would shout hallelujah. So we are in victory. Somebody shout, I am in victory. Somebody shout, I am in victory. So Jesus destroyed him that had the power of death. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. So we have victory in Christ. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Be of good cheer, I have overcome. I will not overcome. I have overcome. My victory is your victory. My triumph is your triumph. Can somebody shout, I am in victory. Alright, so First John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We are world overcomers. First John chapter 4 verse 4. You are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the scriptures are full with the truth of our victory in Christ. It's not a victory given to you by fighting. It's a victory given to you by identification. As he is, so are we. How is he in victory? How are we in victory? How is he triumphant? How are we triumphant? That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. First John chapter 4 verse 17. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. In the previous verses he says, he says there is no fear in love. Perfect love casteth out fear. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. And he says, beloved, keep yourself in the love of God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Next verse. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of his calling. And what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Next verse. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power. To us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Next verse. Which he wrought in Christ. Where is Christ? Christ in you. So the power is at work in you the believer. Because Christ where the power was wrought is in you. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenlies. Next verse. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Look at the next verse. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church. So all things are under the church. Everything Jesus defeated, he put them under the church. You are in charge here. They that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, they reign. The word reign is the same word for rule. They rule in life. You rule over sickness. You rule over poverty. You rule over disease. You rule over fear. 
You rule over everything that the enemy uses to harass the society. You rule over. Somebody shout, I am over all things in Christ Jesus. I didn't hear a powerful amen. Hello. I hope you have been blessed by that wonderful message. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. For you to grow spiritually, you need to hear, study, and meditate on the word. You need to not only hear, but to also read and see. And that is why you need the Christocentric meal. This is a book that reveals to you who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, and what Christ can do through you. This book interprets and breaks down the word into daily meals, making it easier for you to understand and study, build up and strengthen your inner man, all the while growing your relationship with God and your confidence as a believer. To order this life-changing book and other titles, DVDs and CDs by Dr. Abel Damina, call the number or email the address on the screen.